There doesn't have to be a big gap between knowledge and belief. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey. This is part number two of our five-part series, A Day in the Ministry of Jesus. Today, we're talking about more Sabbath ministry. This is what Jesus is doing when he goes to church on Sabbath. In this story, he's showing us that the turnaround doesn't have to take a long time. It doesn't take a long time to go from knowing who God is to believing in him. In fact, it can happen in a moment. But before we get started, wanna thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and share this video with someone else. And if you would, take the time, go over to the website, changeministry.org. Here's a link right down here below, because when we're able to hear his voice, we are able to follow his will. Speaking of hearing knowledge and finding out who God is, we look at the testimony of what the demons, the kind of faith that they had in knowing who Jesus was in relationship to our Heavenly Father. Now in this story, look at what happens when other people come to this knowledge of who God is, but how long does it take for them to go from where they are to where God wants them to be, to go from knowing who Jesus is to believing in him. In Mark chapter one, verse 27, it begins there and it says, they were all amazed in so much that they questioned themselves among themselves saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth Jesus, even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. So now what's happening here? This is an explosion of information. If you will, to use today's term, uh, he went viral. Everybody got to know in that area who this person was, whether it was word of mouth or whether it was someone standing on the corner telling everybody. We just know that his fame started to spread. And when it spread, it spread throughout the region. Now, that was a knowledge of who he is, the news. So how long do we go from knowing who he is to then believing? It says here in verse 29, forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon, that's the key word, anon, they tell Jesus of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them. So Jesus has just shown his power and authority over the demons. After this experience, he's going now, let's just say he's going home for Sabbath lunch. And as he's going there, everyone saw what they saw and what happened at church. And that was a knowledge of what Jesus had done. And you know what? They figured if Jesus could do that for him, he can probably do something for me. And it says there, anon. That word anon is an old English word for immediately. Immediately, they went to Jesus in full confidence that if he could handle that, he can handle this. And when Jesus moves, the Bible says, immediately the fever leaves her. The gap between knowledge and belief. Think of it like a, a synapse or the space between nerves. We have a central nervous system and those nerve cells communicate with each other through electricity. So it'll send, transmit one message to another cell and it passes on like that. Well, that space in between the cells, that space is the synapse. It's the gap. The gap between knowledge on the one hand and belief on the other it doesn't have to be something wide. It doesn't have to take long to put into practice what we practically believe. Now, that doesn't always guarantee that God's going to move in an instant. We don't serve a microwave God. He doesn't leave anything half done. How long it takes him to do it, that's his prerogative. Between us knowing what Jesus can do and believing in what he can do, they're showing us that can happen in a moment. In verse 32, the story continues that, after they have lunch and at even when the sun did set, by the way, because remember, she made lunch after she was healed. When the sun did set, after sunset, they brought unto Jesus all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of the diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Is going back to the study we just finished. If you didn't watch that one, catch that one. When you look at verse 32, notice how it says, and at even. At evening time, everybody comes. So everybody was waiting. They'd heard what had happened at church. 
They heard what now was happening at lunch after church. So they're waiting for the sun to set so they don't break the laws of tradition. And once sun is set, they all fled to Jesus and they all come and ask for healing. That knowledge and that belief, not a lot of time. They moved and acted on what they knew. And if they did it, and if Jesus did it for them, why are we leaving ourselves out of the equation? Whatever it is that we know, God has allowed it to come to our understanding with the full intent that with that knowledge, we can take that faith to believe what we know. And what is the evidence of what we believe? We know what we believe by what we be living. It is the life that reveals our faith. It's the practice that reveals what are we really preaching. And if Jesus could see this happen in this small town and happen anon or immediately, let's not let anything hold us back from letting God do through us what he has revealed to us.